Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about limit laws. Limit laws are simply properties of limits that help us evaluate limits. Let's begin with the limit of a sum. The limit of a sum is the sum of the limits. Let's take a minute and explore this graphically. Suppose f of x is the blue function. We can see that the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 equals 2. g of x is the pink function, and the limit of g of x as x approaches 2 equals 3. Now the green function is another function, which is f of x plus g of x. We can see that the limit of f of x plus g of x as x approaches 2 equals 5. But the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 and the limit of g of x as x approaches 2 summed together separately equals 5 as well. So this confirms the limit law graphically. The limit of the sum of f of x plus g of x equals the limit of f of x plus the limit of g of x. The limit of a sum is the sum of the limits. Now I'm going to show you several other limit laws. We're not going to go through the graphical explorations for each of these, but I encourage you to try them on your own for further enrichment. I also encourage you to pause the video at any time to take notes and reflect on the limit laws. And after I present each of the limit laws, we'll do some example problems together. So let's continue by looking at the limit of a difference. The limit of a difference is the difference of the limits. Next, we have the limit of a constant times a function. The limit of a constant times a function is the constant times the limit of the function. Next, we have the limit of a product. The limit of a product is the product of the limits. And we also have the limit of a quotient. The limit of a quotient is the quotient of the limits. One thing to keep in mind here, the limit of the second function cannot equal zero because then we would be dividing by zero. Now here's a curious one, the limit of a composition. The limit of a composition is the limit of the outer function as x approaches the limit of the inner function. We'll look at an example of this in a second. We also have the limit of a constant. The limit of a constant as x approaches a is just the constant itself. And there's one more limit law we'll discuss here. The limit of a function raised to a positive integer is equivalent to the entire limit raised to that power. Okay, your head might be spinning with all of these limit laws, so let's look at some examples of how they're applied. Suppose f of x and g of x are two continuous functions, and a table of selected values is shown here. Let's find the limit of f of x minus g of x as x approaches 2. Well, this is a limit of a difference, and the limit of a difference is the difference of the limits. So we can separate this into two limits, the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 and the limit of g of x as x approaches 2. Since we have continuous functions, we can get the values of these limits from the table. The limit of f of x as x approaches 2 equals 4, and the limit of g of x as x approaches 2 equals negative 5. If we subtract those values, we get 9, and that is the solution. How about this one? The limit of 3 f of x divided by g of x as x approaches 1. In this case, we're going to apply several limit laws. First, we'll apply the limit of a constant times a function equals the constant times the limit of the function. So what that means is we can move the 3 in front of the limit for f of x. That gives us 3 times the limit of f of x as x approaches 1. And if we look at the table, the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 equals negative 2. Then we'll apply the limit of a quotient. The limit of a quotient is the quotient of the limits. And the limit of g of x as x approaches 1 equals 3. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, and divided by 3 equals negative 2, and that's our solution. How about this one? The limit of f of x squared times g of x as x approaches 3. Again, we have multiple limit laws to consider here. The first one is the limit of a function raised to a positive integer is the whole limit raised to that positive integer. Then we have the limit of a product is the product of the limits. So we can first find the limit of f of x as x approaches 3, which is 7, and then we can square that value. Then the limit of a product is the product of the limits. So now we can multiply by the limit of g of x as x approaches 3 and that limit is 9. 7 squared times 9 is 441, and that is our solution. Now, let's try a limit of a composition. 
the limit of f of g of x as x approaches 1. Remember, the limit of a composition is the limit of the outer function as x approaches the limit of the inner function. So let's first find the limit of g of x as x approaches 1, and that value is 3. Then we'll find the limit of f of x as x approaches 3, which is 7, and that's our solution. Let's look at one more example here to show how limit laws can be applied. Suppose we have the limit of 5x squared plus 3 as x approaches 2. What we can do is break this up into separate limits. The limit of 5x squared as x approaches 2 plus the limit of 3 as x approaches 2. The limit of a sum is the sum of the limits. Then we can move the 5 in front of the limit of x squared as x approaches 2 because the limit of a constant times a function is the constant times the limit of the function. Then the limit of three as x approaches two is just three because the limit of a constant is just the constant. Then the limit of x squared as x approaches two is just the quantity of the limit of x as x approaches two squared. And the limit of x as x approaches two is just two. Finally, we can do all the arithmetic. Five times two squared plus three equals 23, and that's the solution. Now you might be saying to yourself, this seems like a lot of work to evaluate a simple limit problem. And quite honestly, once you understand the limit laws, you don't necessarily need to go through the process of separating limits into their components in every problem. But in any case, as we dive deeper into calculus, it's important that we understand how limit laws work. Before we end this video, let's take a quick look at the limit of a constant. Suppose we have the limit of eight as x approaches two. Well, the line y equals eight is just a horizontal line. As x approaches two, the height of the function is always eight, so the limit is just eight. This works for any constant. We could have the limit of pi as x approaches one, and our answer is pi. We could have the limit of 28,442 as x approaches e, and the answer is 28,442. The limit of a constant is the constant. Now a fun way to really learn the limit laws is by singing them. I encourage you to listen to my limit law song, which will help you memorize several limit laws through music. Well, that's all for this video. Keep on practicing and trying to surpass your limits. And that's how you rock calculus.